looks slightly different sometimes when you see it. So just a heads up. Sometimes you'll see it as it's like, oh, energy released, right? Sometimes you can see it as a plus energy, like because energy is a product, right, in a way. So that doesn't matter. It means the same thing. So either energy released over here or plus energy over here or plus ATP, right? Okay. So a little bit of kind of background, and we covered a lot of this in uh, the biology, the first module anyway, to, to kind of try to get you to see this several times. But what do you, what do you need? Um, you eat for two reasons, right? You eat because you need the building blocks, right? The macromolecules, the fats, the car carbs, and the lip fats and lipids, and the protein, right? You take those and you break them down and then you use the subunits that you all had to memorize, right? Like the monomers of those, and you use those to make your own structures. And the other thing that you need is the energy. So the bonds in between those molecules are released to, make, uh, to get you to make uh, ATP. So remember this, okay? That the energy is stored in chemical bonds. So when you're breaking bonds, energy will be released and then you can use it immediately, right? By making anabolic reactions, right? Or you can store it. And what is the long-term storage for us? Animal cells. If you eat a lot of calories and you, you don't break you break a bunch of bonds, triglycerides, right? So your triglycerides and your adipocytes. That's how you will store that, right? You make those bonds and you store that as long-term energy. Okay, so we are gonna just uh, do a brief refresher, but catabolic reactions break large polymers into smaller stuff. That releases energy, right? What do we call the term releasing energy? Exergonic. Okay, I had a TA, fabulous TA, Anthony, last semester, and he made students memorize your X's are negative, right? Like, he's like, they all leave. Exergonic, leaving. Right? Release energy, energy leads. Anabolic reactions build large polymers from smaller stuff and that requires energy, right? So if you memorize this, then conversely the other one will be true. Now these two are paired, right? So we talked about this before, but you use the subunits and ener energy from a catabolic reaction to drive anabolic reactions, right? So they're paired. This is a great picture showing that. And that is like this, right? So let's say you're eating stuff here. Just if you look at this picture, you'll see that these molecules, they look different from these molecules, right? Like the shape is different here. You don't find the same type of shape. So what it means is that you're eating, like for an example, what did you eat for Super Bowl? Pizza, I had pizza. Wings, okay, you ate those, right? Perfect, that has protein in it, it has fat, it has, you know, basically it has all of the macros. All right, there you go, you ate the wings, and you did a catabolic pathways, you digested that stuff, right? Digestion means breaking it down, okay? You broke bonds that, you know, were released as energy, you lost some heat in the process because it's not completely efficient, right? So some of this energy is actually just going to waste, um, and then you get your monomers out of that. You get your amino acids from those wings, okay? Those amino acids then are used in anabolic pathways and you use the energy that you broke the bonds, right? That came from the bonds and then you make your new stuff with that. So this could be your, right? This could be your receptors on your cells. This could be uh, channels or pumping glucose into the cell. It could be all sorts of things that you're making with that. So just understand these two are paired, right? One drives the other. So um, there's some terminology that you have to memorize if you haven't already, right? So exergonic reactions release energy. So you wanna release your X from your life if you wanna memorize it the way that uh, Anthony had it, okay? What it means is really that the products of the reactions have less energy than the reactants. Uh, okay, um, so for those of you who are confused, does a donut have a lot of energy? has a lot of calories, correct? Right? 
So what do you break it down into? Smaller subunits, they would have less energy, right? They would have less color. When you break it all down, you break those bonds, the products there have less energy than the first initial molecule have, right? That's what that is describing. So things have an inherent energy value, right, as they come. And in this example, that will mean that the products have less energy than the reactants. And then in endergonic reactions, of course, it's the opposite. It's that what you started with were small little things that have less energy than the stuff that you're building in the end, right? Is everybody with me so far? Okay, so again, they're paired, right? We talked about that, but we are using that energy that's released in the exergonic reaction to power the endergonic reactions. So these two will look more and more at. There was something else I wanted to talk briefly about because it's not in your slides, but it's something that I do think students sometimes get tripped up on. Um, and it's this. It's just like terminology. So products, no, we'll start with reactants. Reactants, what the heck does that mean? When you hear the word reactant, what do you think? Say it again. What's used for a reaction? Right, exactly, that's good. What you start with, right? So this is what you start with, and you can also call that the input. Okay, um, you can also call, you can also say that that is um, required, okay? Okay, and then you have products, and what are products then? What, what you get out of the reaction, right? So when the reaction goes forward, you get products, okay? And you can call that then output. Okay, we don't call this required. Okay, so here's the thing, because I see this sometimes in test questions, it says, is glucose required for uh, this reaction to go forward, right? All that that's asking is the same thing as asking, is glucose a reactant of that reaction, right? because it, it would be required, right? The, the, the reactants are very much required for this to go forward. Products are not required for the reaction to go forward, right? They're a result of the rea reaction happening. So if it asks you a question like that, is this and this required for the reaction? It's asking you if it's, you know, is it, is it a reactant? Is it an input, okay? So you'll see that, and the reason I'm saying that, not just for our test, it actually shows up in, you know, the standardized tests y'all be taking. So um, I just, I, I do see students understanding material and then somehow getting tripped up on that question because it's just using a different terminology, right? Okay. All right. Uh, and then we have enzymes. Have we talked about enzymes at all? I can't even remember where I, I feel like we have. What do enzymes end with? We did a little bit of this, right, in module one. What do enzymes end with? Ace. You see something that ends with ace, that means it's an enzyme. Okay, what the heck is an enzyme? Somebody said protein. That's very good because they're, off, they're made out of protein, right? That's, that's, they, they are certainly made out of protein, so enzymes are an example of what a protein can be, right? Protein can be receptors, they can be part of the cytoskeleton, they can be enzymes, right? So yes, that's very good. Enzymes drive reactions forward, okay? So they make things happen faster. They make you go from reactant to product faster. Sometimes this will happen on its own organically, right? Catabolic reactions tend to be spontaneous, right? So they will happen on their own. But if you are adding an enzyme, it's just gonna go a lot faster. And you just have to think about the fact that you have a million of these and a million of these, it's not one, right? And so you will go from a million here to like, right, more stuff here 
in a quicker amount of time if you add an end sign. The other thing that I want you to know right away is that end signs are very, very specific very specific to their reaction. So we have a gazillion enzymes in our systems, and those enzymes are very specific for those reactions, right? So you can't, if you have a mutation that makes you lack an enzyme, you can't just, re, right? Like no en other enzyme is gonna go in and do that job, right? So that means that either you have to take it in the form of pharmaceutical, or you know some other type of, of medicine to kind of help with that. And you should know there's a lot and lot and lot of diseases that stem from this, actual mutations that will you know lead up to an enzyme deficiency. And then you don't get those products that you need as quickly, right? And there's also lots of pharmaceuticals that are enzyme inhibitors, right? So meaning we don't want to make so much of this, right? Like somebody has a disease, we're making too much, okay? inhibit that reaction from happening. So you have a lot of pharmaceuticals that will act like that as well. Okay, so enzymes, they act on substrates. What is this word now? <clears throat> the way I think of substrates is just, it's the dang reactant. We just got a new word for reactant. It's just more specific talking about when an enzyme is involved in the process, okay? So it's like, okay, it's whatever the enzyme is acting on, it's called its substrate. Does that make sense? We just gave it a new word for some reason. Instead of saying the reactant that the enzyme works upon, right? Well, that's now we named it substrate, but that's what it is, okay? The other thing is, so looking at this arrow, right, you do, I think, if you have your notes, you can put here, right, reactant or input, right, put all those words so you know that this, if the arrow is going this way, right, you start with the input or the reactants and you end up with this, which is your product, right? In this example, you'll hear about people that are deficient in lactase, right? If you're deficient in lactase, what can you take over the counter? Lactaid. And lactaid is just a brand for lactase, right? So they made this enzyme in the laboratory and you can actually take it so that you can break this molecule down, right? And so lactose here comes, do you see that it's connected here? So this is a, right, disaccharide. There's two monosaccharides, but they're bonded together. And then there's this reaction that happens that breaks them into their monosaccharides, so galactose and glucose. Now you can use this glucose, right, for cellular respiration, for an example. So most people actually kind of are deficient in this pathway, but it tends, well, actually this ends up in your small intestine and bacteria will do this for you instead. But that ends up causing bloating and gas and all sorts of things. So lots of people can't really drink more than one glass of milk per day without uh, getting this bloating and all of this. And that's just because this is sitting around, it's not being broken down, and then it doesn't get broken down until it gets to the very last end in the small intestine. So there's that. Okay, what else did I wanna say about this process? Is this a catabolic or anabolic reaction? Catabolic. Yes, why do you say that it's catabolic? Yeah, it's being broken down. You have something larger that's breaking, being broken down into two smaller pieces. Very good. Um, heads up, so if I'm an enzyme, do we have two friends in here that know each other well and are not afraid to hold hands? Nobody likes to hold hands with their friends? Hold your yes, thank you very much. Okay, so these guys, right, they're, they're grouped together. I'm the enzyme, right? And so I come in here and I'm like, boom, right? Maybe they would have lost their connection, right, on their own, but I make it happen faster. I go in and I do that. The other thing I can do, let's say that now you're not, uh, you're just, you're still reactants, but you're on your own new reaction, and then I can do this, right? Boom right so enzymes are not